Welcome back to CTV News. Now here's Goreen with the roundup of the weekend sport action. It took less than half of the Crusaders' first pre-season hit-out to put the side into a minor injury crisis when experienced halfback Willie Hines broke his leg against the Highlanders in Timaru. The season-ending injury occurred in the second quarter of the warm-up match when Hines went into a tackle, breaking his left fibula in the process. Hines isn't the only injury worry after the weekend with new Fijian winger Jone Makalai in doubt for the start of the Super Rugby season with a suspected broken arm. The match itself saw the Crusaders go down 29-26 to, to a sharp-looking Highlanders team and although the Cantabs led 12-10 at half-time, it was the Highlanders who proved to be more clinical in the second half of the match. The only piece of good news to come from the weekend could be the news that Andy Ellis may return to the Crusaders earlier than previously thought. Ellis's Japanese side, the Kobe Steelers, were upset in their semi-final match over the weekend and it's now hoped he may return to the side before the start of the new season. Well, it was finals heartbreak for the Canterbury Magicians yesterday as the side fell to defeat in the final of their one-day women's domestic cricket final. Put into bat first, it was Canterbury captain and the competition's top run scorer Amy Satterwaite who produced the goods with yet another stellar knock, scoring 122 not out as the Magicians set a competitive score of 261. However, the Auckland Hearts batting lineup put in a solid display in their run chase, with four of their top six scoring over 40, which proved enough as they reached the total in the last over in Rangiora. A 3-1 win over Southern United has moved Canterbury United to third spot in the National Football League. Having lost 1-0 to the Southerners earlier in the season, Canterbury got their revenge in Dunedin with second-half goals from Aaron Clapham and Brian Stanley, adding to Sean O'Brien's first-half screamer. And finally tonight, East Shirley defeated St Albans over the weekend to move into top spot in the Premier Men's One Day Cricket Competition. In other action, black cap bowler Matt Henry turned out for Marist Harewood as he single-handedly destroyed Rickerton with figures of 5 for 26. Meanwhile, Canterbury regular and former black cap Andrew Ellis scored an impressive 106 from 140 deliveries for Lancaster Park Wollstone as they defeated the Canterbury under-20 team enabling them to sneak into fourth place, setting up a semi-final meeting with East Shirley. The competition's other semi-final matchup will see St Albans take on Canterbury Country. You're up to date with the latest in local sport. I'm Gordon Finlater for CTV Sport. Thanks, Gordon. Now time for the region's weather with backing music from Canterbury band One Waka. Hello Canterbury, I hope you've had a great weekend. Let's take a look at your weather. First up in Timaru, your high was 23. Tamuka and Geraldine, slightly warmer on 25 degrees. Ashburton and Methvin shared 22 degrees today. Rakaia, 25 for you also. Darfield, Leeston and Rolleston, it was a warm 22 for you today. Moving along to Lincoln, your high was 22, Christchurch 21 degrees. Over in Akaroa, it was a nice day for you, sitting on 22 degrees. Moving up the region, Kaiapoi, Rangiora and Amberley, you all shared 22 degrees. Colverton, Hamner Springs and Cheviot, you were one of the warmest areas today, 25 for you. And at the time, Kay called out slightly warmer on 21 degrees. Looking at tomorrow's weather, Timaru, it will be fine with high cloud increasing during the day and mild northeasterlies. Tonight's low 15, tomorrow's high 22 degrees.
to Ashford and now it's looking like another fine mild day but humid with north easterlies and increasing high cloud. Your low tonight 15 with a high of 22 expected. Let's take a look at Christchurch. Mostly fine for you with sunny periods and some high cloud. North easterly winds are expected and it'll be breezy in the afternoon. Some fog patches are expected tonight with a low of 15. Tomorrow's high 21 degrees. Kai Kaikoura tomorrow, it's fine and sunny for you with north easterlies and some mild to warm temperatures. Your low tonight is 9, tomorrow's high 25 degrees. And in other areas around the region, Tamuka and Geraldine, there will be some cloud all day for you with a high of 22. Methvin and Rakai, cloud expected for you, slightly warmer, 21 degrees. Darfield, Leeston, Rolleston and Lincoln, some cloud expected for you, you all share the high of 21 degrees. Moving over to Akaroa, you'll get some cloud throughout the day with a nice 21 degree high. Kaepoe, Rangiola and Amberley, warm day for you with some cloud, your high 22. Culverton, Hamner Springs and Cheviot, some cloud for you also and you're looking like the warmest, 24 degrees. Looking ahead for Canterbury, from Wednesday to Friday, skies will often be cloudy with areas of low cloud in the morning and by night there'll be some drizzle patches. Fine by day with low cloud breaking to reveal some high cloud, a few sunny patches expected, most of these during the afternoons. It'll be mild and humid with moderate northeasterly winds also. And taking a look at the weekend ahead, it'll be mostly fine for both Saturday and Sunday, with high cloud expected and some warm north to northwesterly winds. And that's your weather for Monday. Thanks, Jared. Well, every year hundreds turn out to New Brighton Beach for the annual Street Kite Day. And this year's colour spectacular was no different. Here's a sample of what that day brought. What an amazing looking day, I really missed out. That set of new, that set of news from Monday, you have a great night. Supporting local content so you can see more of New Zealand on air. I'm selling my home with Gavin Top of Harvey's because I know he'll get me the best possible price. Gavin even guarantees it. His buyer's price declaration guarantee gives me confidence knowing I'll get the best possible price for my house. I know I can trust him because he listens to what I want to achieve and goes the extra mile to get great results. If you want to get Gavin's highest possible price guarantee like I am, give him a call or take a look at his website and he'll get you sold. is a personalised service for those that need extra help and support. A cost effective solution for someone who needs more than just a taxi driver. Our drivers are handpicked from our experienced team and specialise in providing the right support and companionship. 
Home safe every time with Blue Star Taxis. Welcome to Caltex Redwood. We're a family owned business proudly supporting our local community. We're open 24 7 for fuel and shop goods, and we have an amazing team of people ready to help you. Save at least six cents per litre using AA Smart Fuel Cards. We also offer great value on our LPG bottle fills. We have a full workshop and Bridgestone tyre centre. Our mechanics and tyre technicians will get your car sorted. Caltex Redwood. We're just down from St Bede's on Main North Road. Caltex Redwood. What drives you? Welcome back to CTV News. We have a developing story coming into the station here. Drivers are being urged to turn back from an area near Arthur's Pass as firefighters battle a major scrub fire. Flock Hill Lodge, we understand, is sheltering drivers who can't go any further. Spokesperson Brittany Lee told News Talks there'd be the fire is about a kilometre from the own buildings there and smoke is billowing in the distance. She says uh, the winds are blowing in the opposite direction so they're allowed to stay put for now. Helicopters with two monsoon buckets are attempting to bring the blaze under control but at this stage the blaze is raging out of control and we'll bring you more details as it comes to hand here at CTV News. Well to the day's other news the sun has been shining and Cantabrians were out in force this afternoon celebrating the first week of Waltham Pool. Thousands have flocked to the water since the pool reopened last Sunday. It's the first time since the earthquakes. Marcus gives reports. Waltham Pool, the perfect place to cool off the summer. That was beautiful, mate. It's real good. Ryan Shearer has been spending every afternoon at the pool since it reopened last week. Just a nice outdoor pool, it's close to work, so a bit of a swim at lunchtime. He's not alone either. More than 3,500 people have joined him. Waltham Pool was severely damaged in the earthquakes and nearly four years on has finally reopened after $3.2 million of repairs. It's been pretty busy. It's been re really, really popular because it's obviously the pool's just reopened, but it's been really good. The pool in the Hydra slide opened to much fanfare last weekend with 40 minute long queues, but was closed a few days later after a fee coincident. It took six hours to clean the water, but the pool reopened the following day and has been busy ever since. I'd say each day we've had at least sort of a good 500 people through the pool. The community has been missing their pool and they're glad to have it back. It's not really right in the backyard but yeah, I brought the grandchildren here today. With the weather we're having we need something like this and we need more of them. In fact we need one out east. It's a great place for people to come and like spend the spend the day, they can get some lunch and come and just hang out in the pool, which is probably what makes it such a great place. The local children have been loving the easy access. And I never get to go swimming anymore, so it's great. We live close, so we can come like all the time. We're really um, excited about it reopening. We used to really enjoy it here, and now it's I guess it's even better because it's upgraded a bit more. The pool will be open seven days a week until early March, and these lifeguards are hoping thousands of keen swimmers will be filling up the pool until it closes for the season. Marcus Gibbs, CTV News. What a great positive story. Well, we hope this will be positive for you. The first term of 2015 begins soon. And as we know, getting prepped for school comes at an incredible cost. In fact, some people have noticed that cost has been higher than expected. Jared McCulloch explains. We had to buy a iPad last year and a computer for school, but this year we haven't had that expense, so it's been a little less expensive this year. So last year was quite expensive, so what was all those things again, sorry? What you the computer, um, laptop for school, and an iPad, so it was, we were nearing $2,000 to start out the school year, <laughs> plus school uniform last year at high school, that was about $1,200. So um, it was a huge year last year. This year she hasn't grown too much, so she can use the uniform again. Lots of stationery, um, uniforms, shoes. Yep. Do you have any um, technology devices you have to buy for this year? No, luckily. <laughs> so keep the cost down a wee bit? Yeah, absolutely. Yep. Don't have to buy any computers, which is good. It's been really expensive, yeah, because um, one school in particular, you have to actually do your upfront activity fees, camp fees, um, donation to the school, everything before they even allow you to buy the stationery on their website. So seriously, you have to um, fork out, I think one school was $520 just for the year for the school. What are your thoughts on having like electronic devices and stuff at school? Do you think it's good? I think it's excellent, but only once they get to high school. School. I don't think they should have them on their own as a, um, 
in primary school because it's just yeah too much expense for a kid to be in tr you know trusting them to use it yeah wisely. <laughs> Well, as the rebuild Roadworks continues this year, 2015, more detours are on the cards, but don't worry, that does mean progress, doesn't it? Here's more on what to expect this month. With the new school year about to start, Skirt is advising road users of the main roadworks delaying traffic around the city. For the next few days, commuters from Scarborough Hill will experience delays with the corner of Whitewash Head, Scarborough and Head Barden roads being closed between 9am and 3pm to vehicles while wastewater work is carried out. Traffic will be open to one lane thereafter for another four weeks. New detours will be created in Awanui and Portsmouth Street as wastewater and piping work is carried out until the end of March. Alternative city-bound routes on Pages Road will also be set up for the next few days. Works continue in Dyers Road, Macy's Road and on the Fenelton Road Bridge with completion on these expected from February to the end of March. And more roading progress in Christchurch after five years of planning a new overbridge linking Wigram suburbs with Blenheim Road employment area has been given the green light. A new road overpass is to be built, linking the southwest suburbs with a more direct route to the Blenheim Road employment parks. Construction on the bridge over Curlitz Road, linking Wigram Road into Birmingham Drive via Magdala Place, will start on the 12th of February. The Christchurch City Council says it will accommodate additional travel demand from rapid development in Wigram Aidenfield, Awatia and Hallswell. The $30 million project commences next month and is expected to be completed in October 2016. Hawkins Construction will build the overpass, which will adjoin the Christchurch Southern Motorway and Highway 75, traversing the AMP showgrounds and Hillmorton Hospital area. The first few months of construction will involve site works and assessment before the road commences. Still to come here on CTV News, the weekend sports roundup and the region's weather. Love music, love summer, then Ingham Lazy Sundays in the beautiful Botanic Gardens Archery Lawn is just the thing to get you enjoying the outdoors this summer. Every Sunday through January and February and it's all free. So take time to recharge with family and friends, relaxing and listening to some great music from top musicians. View the lineup at summertimes.co.nz today. Ingham Lazy Sundays, putting summer into your Sundays. Avoid the monkeys when it comes to relocating. Trust A1 Movers, a family business since 1993 that guarantees a professional job every time. We carefully handle and wrap your valued items, ensuring they have a safe journey. Secure storage and insurance options are also available. A1 Movers, the careful, caring, moving company. Oi! We all know the best thing you can do for your body is eat fresh foods in their natural state. The same applies to your skincare. Southern Skin provides a skincare range with fresh, locally sourced ingredients, plus natural preservatives and emulsifiers to produce the best nourishment for your skin to unleash your healthiest complexion. New Zealand Olive and Aloe Skin Care. For young or old, men, women and children, there is a product in the Southern Skin range for you. SouthernSkin.co.nz Tonight on CTV News, a serious crash lands three in hospital. A fire is raging near Flock Hill Station. We have pictures from the site and thousands continue to flock to Walton Pool. Are you one of them? Broadcasting across Canterbury. From the CTV studio, this is First at Five. Good evening. One person is in hospital in a serious condition after a three-vehicle crash on State Highway 1 near Christchurch. And police are appealing for witnesses but say initial reports are a car hit a truck and trailer head on before hitting a van. The driver of the car is in a serious condition in hospital while the driver of the van is in a moderate condition. Both were trapped for about 30 minutes and Marcus Gibbs was at the scene and filed this report. The driver of this Toyota Camry is lucky to be alive after a major crash this morning. Yeah, potentially an extremely serious uh, incident. Um, it's a 100 kilometre hour piece of road and 
you know, any kind of collision at that speed is uh, potentially serious injuries, if not fatal. Police believe the driver of the blue Camry to be at fault. A car has uh, drifted across the centre line into the path of the uh, truck and uh, once it's collided with the truck it's then careered into the van and had a head-on collision with that. The drivers of the car and van were both trapped in their vehicles for around half an hour. You can see where the jaws of life have ripped the roof of the Toyota here. The driver of the van's uh, in serious condition at this stage but it's not considered to be life-threatening, early indications are, which is good, um, and the passenger was pretty much OK. The driver of the blue car is also in serious condition. The driver of the truck is very shaky and will be offered counselling. The road was closed for several hours while a diesel spill was cleaned up after the truck's fuel tank was pierced during the crash. This isn't the first serious crash on this stretch of road. Last November, 71-year-old West Mountain man Glenn Hugh Rockle was killed when a truck crashed into the driver's door of his vehicle. This scene is right on top of a, uh, a fatal accident that occurred at the end of last year. Um, the road itself is a straight piece of uh, State Highway 1. There's no real need for accidents to occur, it's just the human factor that's, that's causing this. Police still don't know why the driver of the blue car veered across the centre line. Their investigations are continuing and anyone who saw the crash is urged to come forward. Meanwhile, police have a message for Cantabrians. If you're tired or if you um, don't feel that you should be driving, you just pull over. This three-car pile-up, warning enough for Cantabrians to heed the sergeant's advice. Marcus Gibbs, CTV News. Well, as we go to air tonight, a fire is raging near State Highway 73 near Flock Hill Station on the way to Arthur's Pass. Several fire engines have been called to the bush blaze, which is being fanned by pr uh, pretty high winds. The fire has been ablaze for about several hours now and people are being asked to avoid the area for the time being until the fire service gets the fire under control. And amid a particularly dry fire season across the region, a new district commander has just returned from the UK and taken up the region's top role. Jared McCulloch asked him about his plans in Canterbury. He's a long-serving fire officer and he's back from overseas taking up a new job at the Christchurch Central Fire Station. Introducing Steve, the new fire regional commander for the top half of the South Island. So my job here is to coordinate the activities of the New Zealand Fire Service to make sure that um, we serve the public consistently. Steve Turek has been in the fire service for nearly 40 years and he's back after serving over eight years in a management position at a busy London station. When the opportunity came, he took it and services there are similar to home. London obviously provided a, a range of opportunities. It's a, a large metropolitan city of 8 million people. Uh, with that comes a whole range of different uh, issues, um, but not unlike New Zealand in lots of cases. So there is diversity, there is uh, you know, different cultural aspects to the city. Um, the number of uh, incidents and everything because of its large metropolitan built-up area provides for a you know, wide range of experience, all of which I can bring back and uh, you know, impart here. Steve has been in his new position for only two weeks, taking care of Region 4, which spans from Timaru up to the Malba region. The station is still operating out of portable buildings and large parts of the existing fire station is still out of bounds due to the quakes. Despite this, it's been a good start for Steve. It's been excellent. Um, you've turned on some wonderful weather for me since I've been here and uh, I've had the opportunity to uh, visit many of the areas that I'm now responsible for. But the wonderful weather is also having a downside. Steve and his team are helping manage the near drought conditions which have caused multiple scrub fires over the last few weeks in the Canterbury region. There are total fire bans on across most of the region and restricted ones in the rest of the area and uh, the, the region, so uh, it is causing some issues for both the urban firefighters, paid volunteer and our rural uh, colleagues as well. Um, obviously the dry conditions mean that uh, the um, fire awareness and everything else needs to be heightened, so our education programs need to kick in. We need to continually work with people to uh, make sure that they are safe from fire and that they follow common sense basic precautions to try and avoid fire. While overseas, Steve managed a similar role, working as an assistant commander specialising in the area of fire safety. And some of the skills and experiences he's gathered is what he wants to embrace in his new role.
My day job in, in London was um, in terms of fire safety regulation, so I was responsible for community safety and public education in the fire safety area. And I think there's a lot of things that uh, we have in common with England in that respect, and I'll be able to impart some of that here. With the weather being ideal for summer getaways and holiday goers, it's a concern to the fire service. However, the public is taking the latest fire bans into consideration. Everything starts with um, education of the public and common sense approach to the use of fire. We ask the public obviously to make sure that they're safe, you know, the, the normal precautions that you would take for fire generally, like discarded cigarettes uh, and everything else are, you know, um, much more critical now. But even things, the, the everyday things like mowing the grass, um, using, you know, cutting equipment outside and everything are really a no-no at the moment. Being new to the job, it's difficult for Steve to judge incidents from previous years, but many fires can start from basic safety mistakes. This part of New Zealand does experience drought conditions and dry conditions, and as we've seen over the last few weeks, there have been a number of vegetation fires and fires both in the urban areas, in the cities, uh, as a cause of you know um, irresponsibility to some degree and people just not taking basic precautions. But in general, Steve believes the public is taking the safety messages on board. The public are responding very well, so people are taking common sense precautions, you know, people are using hoses around their properties and, and everything else uh, to make sure that, uh, you know, if a fire does start, they're prepared for it. People are heeding the warnings that we are giving, so we're very pleased with that. We just want to make sure that we continue to reinforce that message and, uh, you know, it's an ongoing process. It's another adventure for Steve, even after 39 years of service. Jared McCulloch, CTV News. And we're grateful to have Steve in this region. Well, there's still no word on what caused a fatal microlite crash that claimed the lives of two notable members of Timaru's community over the weekend. The investigation into last Friday's microlite crash in Timaru is expected to conclude this evening. 51-year-old senior sergeant Hohi Randall Tikitiki and experienced flight instructor 86-year-old Alfred Jack Mallop died at the scene. The two had taken off for a routine training flight from Richard Pierce Airport around 7pm but crashed on farmland just 30 minutes later. The Civil Aviation Authority says Mr Mallop had significant flight experience and his aviation documents and medical certificates were all up to date. He had also been awarded the top award for aviation instruction in 2012 by the New Zealand Airline Pilots Association and by that time he had trained at least 300 students on their first solo flight some of which have gone on to become Air Force officers, airline pilots and even flight instructors themselves. He'd also been involved in helping to establish the New Zealand Association of Women in Aviation. Both men were fondly known in the Timaru community and their deaths have been referred to the corridor. Well, still to come here on CTV News, the warm summer has thousands flocking to a newly opened Waltham Pool and students make the most of their holidays before returning to school for the new year.